Hello and welcome to your Daily Fix with me, Sean Paul Johnston. E3 has started, people, and it's been pretty good so far. I'm not massively hyped, however, there has been a couple of really cool announcements already, which I'll get to. Today's Daily Fix is going to be focusing on the Xbox conference, though, specifically what was rumoured as the Xbox Scorpio. So I'm just going to go over some of the stuff about that, what I think about it, and some of the games that were announced. So let's jump straight into it. So yesterday... Uh, last night, 10 o'clock, the Xbox press conference was on and obviously the big news was that the Xbox Scorpio has now been revealed. It's going to be called the Xbox One X. Don't know why they chose that name, but anyway, the Xbox One X. It's coming out in November the 17th, 2017 and it's going to be $499, which is probably going to be about £400 or they might even go with a straight conversion considering the, the exchange currency rates. Are terrible so it might even be 500 pound by 500 dollars anyway 499 dollars specifically so yeah it's a super powerful console they went on about it being the most powerful and smallest console they've ever made I want to touch upon a couple of things though so one the console doesn't come with the elite controller which if you're paying for a premium console i thought they would have chucked that in there and it would have made maybe the price a little bit more palatable the fact that it's just the normal standard Xbox One S controller, you know, the refined one, is good. But why not chuck the Elite one in there? It makes perfect sense. Make it the super elite version of, of your console. The second thing was the size. Now, they went on about it being the smallest console ever. If you actually look at the pictures, there's a couple of pictures of the Xbox One X stacked on top of the original Xbox One S. And it's almost the exact same size. I think there's a, a very slight difference in the height if you lie it flat, the height. So ignoring that, it's virtually identical. In fact, I'm thinking that it looks uglier compared to the Xbox One S. I think the, the design on the Xbox One S was beautiful. It was clean, it was sharp, the white looked amazing, and it just looked like a really, really nice console. And now they've went with a stupid tiered step design, like what the, uh, the PlayStation did. And I just don't like it at all. I, just, I think they went back a stage in design. If they had to just made it the exact same size as the Xbox One S, the exact same shape, made it black or that gunmetal grey, and had all the cool stuff in there, the vapour chamber, the souped up hardware, and charged, well, I'm, I'm not happy about the price either, but added in an Xbox One Elite controller, I would have been delighted. It would have been pretty cool. I would have considered even getting it. Let's move on to the price though. This is the big thing. $500 for the console. Now, just before the conference, the Xbox One S, they went and put a promotion on where the prices dropped down to $200. So in America, you can get the Xbox One S for $200 and some, people, some places are selling that for about $209 with a game. In the UK, it's about £200 with a game. So, jumping up, you're paying double for this console now, for the Xbox One X. And I had a little look online. I looked at like, well, how can I compare this? Because instantly my thoughts are, this is far too expensive, especially when that console is now £200. So I went and had a look at the Apple website. And I looked at something, a comparison between an iPhone 7 and an iPhone 7 Plus. And between that and the iPads, the I, iPad 10 inch and 12 inch, it's always about a 20 to 25% difference between the normal model and the premium model. So if you're buying something for 600 pounds, it's maybe 750 now. So that's not too bad. And I can see why people go with that. And I think that's what Microsoft's trying to do with the Xbox One X. And the same with Sony with the PlayStation 4 Pro, is they're trying to bring in this premium version of their device. And that's cool. I think that's right. I think that's the way things are going. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand here and be like so resistive of it. As much as I want a single console, it lasts for five years and then you move on to the next one. I just think this iterative version of consoles. I've been saying it for ages now. I, I'm, I'm not keen on it in a lot of ways. And I think when you're charging twice the price now of the S model, it just seems like it's too much. However, I did look a little bit further. So I looked at the the Mac Pro uh, laptops and I was looking at the price difference between them and between like a Mac laptop and the Mac Pro version, it's double the price. So, you know, I think Microsoft's going in this direction where they're trying to make it like a, a hardware, like a PC laptop type situation where, yes, you are getting that super powerful console 
and it is way better. And it's if you want to buy the premium version, you can do all the same stuff in it, but it's just premium and it's got the best versions. And they've even so much as said that, that's cool, I'm fine with that. However, I think with consoles, I'm not sure how much it works. If you think about like a mobile phone, like I said, there's a 20% difference, 25% difference. With a laptop, you're using it for completely different things. One person might buy a MacBook for browsing the internet. Someone might buy a Mac Pro for being an editor or a video editor or a music creator. So there's two complete different usage cases there for the difference in the machines, and that's why you're paying more. So I think when you've got a console that does essentially identical just in higher graphics and a little bit better, I'm not really sure in that idea of it. And I think when you start getting up to $500, you're starting to go into PC territory. And if you're wanting a, the most super powerful console, the best graphics or whatever, the best graphics especially, or the most powerful graphics, PC is where it's at. And I don't think the Xbox can really compete. So I, I, I think Microsoft and PlayStation 4 Pro I think they've put themselves in this position where I just don't know how much sales they're going to get from these consoles and it may be that they're totally happy with it, it's just a premium option and you'll get that 5 or 10%. You know, I think something like just now it's 20% of PlayStation 4 Pros are, the, are, are what's getting sold between that and the normal PlayStation 4. So it might be that that's what they've kind of targeted, you know, if they can sell one fifth of their consoles or a quarter of their sales are for their premium device it sells enough, it makes enough, that it makes it worthwhile. So we'll see how that goes. The other thing was they never mentioned VR. Now we thought it was gonna be VR ready, it is VR ready as far as I'm aware, but there was no mention of VR at all during the conference, which was surprising, I thought we'd see something. It looks now that like Microsoft has taken a step back from the Xbox One X, doing VR specifically, or being tailored for that, and they're more focusing on the PC. What they did actually say, there was an interview with IGN and Phil Spencer, when he was asked about VR and the focus on VR, what he did actually say was, where we're really seeing developer interest is on the Windows platforms. So yeah, it looks like VR isn't the focus of the Xbox One X. Maybe down the line when there's a bit more mass market adoption, or maybe once there's a user base there for the Xbox One X, maybe they'll bring in something VR. And I think really they're looking more into the inside out tracking type of headsets where you don't need cameras set up everywhere. And maybe once wireless comes in, then maybe we'll see it. All I'm worried about now is that we're four years or three or four years into the console cycle for the PlayStation and the Xbox. Are they now gonna come up with new machines in a year's time or two years time? And I'm gonna feel like it's just too much. You know, it's like, like I said, I've always liked the five year cycle or, or thereabouts. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the Xbox One X, what you thought about the reveal, the hardware, the price, uh, the features. Do you think you'll be getting one? I think if you don't have an Xbox One and you're on the fence and you're thinking about getting one, it's maybe a good time to buy it. But that price is a big... If you're standing in a shop and you're looking at the two consoles, an Xbox One S that I think looks better now, and an Xbox One X that's double the price and doesn't look as nice, I'm gonna go with the S, and I'm actually considering maybe getting an S again, because I had one here in the studio. Now the games, a couple, couple of exclusive games were, uh, one of them Sea of Thieves, we know about Sea of Thieves, we saw this last year's E3, looking pretty good. Um, it showed a little bit more of this time than just the sea battles, so they actually showed some co-op island based gameplay where they went around getting the treasure, jumping into the sea and searching for things. Looks pretty cool, I think I will really need to get my hands on it. I've, I've not got an Xbox here, so, until I get my hands out and play it, I'll have to see what it's like. The other one was Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Now this looks like a, a sequel to Ori, the original game. I never played that myself either, but it's made by Moon Studios. The trailer they put up looked really, really cool. I'll have this up here so you'll see it. But the trailer looked amazing, so that's cool. Uh, and then, yeah, well things like Forza 7, we knew that was coming. They announced the Porsche, uh, or Porsche, whatever you want to pronounce it. They announced that, that it was this exclusive unveil of it, the first time people were seeing this new Porsche. So that was cool if you're into your racing games. And then the other one, Crackdown 3. Well, we saw that again back in a previous E3, and one of the big focuses was the destructible environments. They talked about the cloud-based system and how they could all link up the power of the Xbox One, and that would calculate it all so you could destroy massive environments. They never showed a single thing of that this time. 
So is the focus off the destructible environments, is that still there? Or are they more focusing on something else? Because if they're focusing just on the team-based or fighter-based side of it, then it's just, another, it's just another game. And it didn't even look particularly that good. I think the actual destructible destruction of the environments was what was making it appealing to some people. And yeah, that was it pretty much. I, I, like, I felt like it was a decent show. I'd probably give them a B plus for it. It never blew me away. I think the Xbox is priced Xbox One S is priced way too high. I think it should have been literally about three hundred dollars or three hundred and fifty dollars. Now they might say the tech in there, you, like you couldn't do that, but I think with the price of the S, that's what price it needed to be three hundred to three hundred and fifty max. Uh, I don't know how well it will sell. There was one last thing. Sorry, there was the the backwards compatibility. They're expanding upon that, and now original Xbox games will be available. And I want to clarify this because it was a little bit confusion, uh, confusing last night when me and my brother were watching the show, was if you have the, an original Xbox game, you can play that in the Xbox One X. If you bought the, that same game, let's say you had an Xbox 360 and you bought a digital version of that game, you'll now get access to that for free. What I'm not sure about is if you've got an Xbox game, I can't even re recall if you could buy games digitally on the Xbox original machine, uh, but if you could, then I don't think you get them on this new machine. It's only if you had the Xbox 360 version. So we were sort of debating, I was saying, well, you have to have the disc of the original Xbox or if you bought it on Xbox 360. So if you completely skip that Xbox 360, you need to have the disc or you'll never get access to those Xbox original games. So uh, it's, it's not a big deal. And the fact that they're bringing the backwards compatibility is awesome. So I'm really excited about that. There was a couple of games were announced, but I'll go into them over the next few days. Anthem, uh, Beyond Good and Evil is being shown now at the Ubisoft, Beyond Good and Evil 2, massive cheers for that. Uh, and some other games, some other cool stuff, so we'll talk about that. A lot of these are multi-platform games, so I'll cover them in the coming days, but that's it for your Daily Fix, guys. Oh, and you remember, Games Lounge Episode 3, now Games Lounge Series 3, Episode 3 is up on YouTube, so if you've not checked it out, go and check it out. Give us a comment or some questions in the feedback bit below and let us know what you think of it. Let us know what you think about E3 so far. And that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow with PlayStation 4 or possibly Nintendo. I'll decide which one I want to do uh, news. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye.